بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وشفيع دلوبنا بالقاسم محمد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما My brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, respected alam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. With a short amount of time I have, inshallah I want to go through some step-by-step -step, uh, analogies to bring into perspective death and how we can relate to death inshallah in today's society. We hear the term inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'oon where in Surah Baqarah verse 156 Allah reminds us that indeed surely we belong to him and to him we shall return. But Shaykh Mutahiri has a different perspective on inna lillah. He says that this term should not only be used when it comes to death. Indeed everything is inna lillah wa inna alayhi raji'oon meaning that everything will be given to Allah, everything ascends from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what sense? Your risk is given by Allah, your wealth is given by Allah, your health is given by Allah, your families are given by Allah, your marriages are given by Allah. And when they all expire, when they all finish, they all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a perspective that one doesn't think about when it comes to the term inna lillahi wa inna la rajaun. So this is what Shaykh Mutahiri says in his book that even while you're living, when you are alive, this term can be applied to the living, living beings. And it shouldn't only be applied to when someone obviously passes away. And obviously if we look at Surah Al Imran, the next chapter, verse 180, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah be and to Allah belongs the inheritance of the heaven and the earth. So not only the dunya, but the akhirah also belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we go further in the Quran in Surah Maidah, chapter 5, verse 120, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies and says that the kingdom of the heavens and the earth and everything in them belongs to Him. Everything. There is nothing you can tell me that you have that does not belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He has power over all things. A quick analogy I will give to bring into perspective how the dunya is. There was once a conversation between an elderly fish and a small fish. The elderly fish tried explaining to the small fish that there are things outside Salawat Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So this analogy is a conversation between two fishes in the sea. The big fish tried explaining to the small fish there are people out there, there are fishermen, that he would try to explain fishermen, there are creatures outside the ocean that you cannot see. And these creatures, they will capture you by using hooks, fishing, you know, fishing methods, how fishermen catch fish. They will capture you, and when they capture you, you will be consumed, they will eat you. The small fish said, I've been living in the ocean all my life. I know exactly what the ocean is full of. It's full of reefs, it's full of other species. There's no such thing as fishermen. The big fish said, I have done my duty to advise you. What you would like to do, you can do. So the little fish, a couple of days later, he saw a small, a small, a small thing, a strange thing that he didn't, he didn't know what it was. But he remembered that the big fish said, when you see something like this, don't go next to it, don't go near it. The big fish, the small fish didn't listen to the big fish and he went and he ate the bait. When he ate the bait, the small fish got taken out of the ocean. When he got taken out of the ocean, that is when his eyes actually opened. And he saw the fishermen, and he saw that there is life beyond the ocean. The same way in the dunya, we have big fishes and small fishes. The small fishes believe that this world is only this, this world is the only thing that exists. There is nothing beyond this world. But it's the big fishes, the elderly, the pagambar, the imams, the awliya, that can see things that we cannot see. There are jinns that Allah has created, there are angels that Allah has created. And the veil upon our eyes can only be lifted when we gain, gain true taqwa to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one thing we need to put into perspective, that even when the big fish was explaining to the little fish, that indeed there are things the little fish ignored, the little fish didn't care. We need to make sure that we do not become ignorant and narrow-minded like the little fish. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained upon us a test on this world. And indeed, in the akhirah we shall be accountable. And 
we shouldn't get too attached to this dunya. Imam Muhammad al Baqar alayhi salam. He says there is no higher sin than the eagerness to live in this temporary world. And we know that people in today's day and age are trying to find the elixir of life, the cure to life, uh, the, sorry, the cure to death, to try to you know, avoid death. And we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again in Surah Al-Qabud, chapter 29, verse 27, says, That indeed every soul shall taste death, and to us you will be ultimately returned. So wherever you may be, Allah also says in the Quran, in uh, Surah Al-Nisa, verse uh, 78, Wherever you may be, death shall overtake you, even if you are fortified towers. It doesn't matter how far or how big you think you are, death will always come for you. And this reminds me of a little story by Nabi Sulaiman. In Nabi Sulaiman's time, there was once a companion of Nabi Sulaiman. And in the gathering, Nabi Sulaiman said to one of his companions, he said, Malik al Maut is looking at you. The angel of death is looking at you. And he's looking at you very, very angrily. The companion got frightened and said, Why is he looking at me? He goes, I don't know why he's looking at you, but he's looking at you. He goes, Oh, Nabi Sulaiman, I have been a great companion of yours. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me? Can you grant me a wish? Nabi Sulaiman goes, what, what do you want? What, what is your wish? He said, Can you fly me away to him, the place of him? Fly me away from this place. Nabi Sulaiman said, Okay. Nabi Sulaiman flew him away to him. A few hours later, Angel Israfil came back and he was smiling. And Nabi Sulaiman said, What's happened? He goes, I was ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take this man's soul. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me to take this man's soul on the land of him. And I was contemplating, how can I take this man's soul when he is sitting in your gathering? Wow. And then Alhamdulillah, you helped me with my, with my duty. And when you shifted him away from him, I took his soul. Meaning that you cannot have chased death. Where your kismet is, where it's written that you will die, you will die. There is no questions, there is no ifs, there is no buts. And indeed, the death from which you flee, indeed it will meet you. Then you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and witnessed. And he will inform you about what you used to do. This is what we read in Surah Jummah every day, every Friday. And that was verse 8. Imam Ali, Imam Ali also says, that when it comes to breathing, every breath you take is a step closer to death. The Ayma have given us ample of tools to fight and make sure we prepare for the Akhirah. One of the last analogies I will give you before my time is coming up is that there was once a captain of a ship. The captain of the ship landed at an island and he landed at the island for a few hours and he said to the people, go and make sure you're back in a few hours. There were four categories of people on the ship. The first were the wives. The wives stayed next to the ship. They picked up a few souvenirs, got back onto the ship and sat in comfortable seats. The second were the forgetfulness. The forgetfulness people, they knew the ship was there, but they went around the island and they came back, but when they came back, all the good seats were taken. So they were uncomfortable, but they got back onto the ship. The third were the greedy people. The greedy people thought, let me go and explore this island and look for the treasures of this island. Once we find the treasures of the island, we'll go back to the ship. Uh, but when they came back to the ship, the ship had been, the ship had gone. And the fourth were the aimless. The aimless and the purely lost people who said, there is no such thing as a ship. Our life is on this, on this island and they start building houses and everything. We have to be careful that we are not, we, we have to categorize ourselves which which category do we fall under? The ship being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we going to be the wise people that stay with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that remember that this dunya is temporary? Are we going to be the forgetfulness people, that forget Allah occasionally, but we will go back to Him eventually and be saved? Or are we going to be the greedy people? Now the greedy people is the category many of us see others fall into and maybe we may fall into where we get so lost in the dunya that we start acquiring all these things all these treasures and all these all these you know luxurious things that satisfy our desires and needs however when we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's too late and we have ample of um, examples in history of people that went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it was too late and then there is the aimlessly and purely lost people which I'm sure none of us here are 
because alhamdulillah, if you come to the masjid, you cannot be completely aimless. So those, those, these are the four categories that we have to make sure we do not fall under. Imam Musa al-Qadim said that the story of the world is like a snake. And the story of the world is as a snake that appears to be soft, but inwards it is deadly and poisonous. So remember brothers and sisters to return back to God before it's too late. Don't wait till you are in a box to come to the masjid. Rather converse with God and prepare yourself. When is the last time you had a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not in Arabic, not in du'as. When is the last time you sat in the masjid and had a conversation with your Lord in your own language? When is the last time you came back from work and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what has happened to me at work. You know the atrocities that have been placed upon me. But I am here, I am talking to you. If you've never talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can you expect there to be mutual exchange? Remember, you take one step to Allah and He will take ten towards you. And this is why I say that we must, especially for the youth, we must not live our lives that we will live forever. And neither can we live it thinking that we are Jawan or we think that we are young and death cannot be upon us. How many, how many youngsters are there that do not see another Muharram? How many youngsters are there that do not, do not see another Ramadan? There was once a lady that used to carry, carry her coffin with her wherever she used to go. This is how, how prepared she was for death. And the last question I will give you is, if you were to die tomorrow, what would you do? You hear that everyone says, live every day like it's your last. So my question is, if you knew today was your last day, what would you do? What would you wear? What would you eat? What would you drink? Who would you chill with? Who would you befriend? Who would you keep yourself in company with? Contemplate on that, on that question and inshallah you should live every day like that rather than make it the last day. And we know that the only thing you take to the grave is your deeds. And alhamdulillah the dear sister that passed away, her friends and family know that she was one who attended the Masjid frequently, regardless of her illness, even when she was highly ill, she would make an effort to come to the masjid. And an inspiration to us all, that even with an illness, she would come to the masjid and there's me and you, perfectly fine, perfectly full of uh, full health, yet we cannot make the effort to come to the masjid due to laziness, due to the mosque not being trendy enough in our busy schedules. My brothers and sisters, remember one thing, that when you die, your schedules will be free. And this is the same place the way your body will lay, and this is the same place your janazah will happen. But I beg you, brothers and sisters, don't wait till your janazah and make an effort to come to the masjid more, more frequently. Never abandon the masjid. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant this sister a high station in paradise. Allah forgives any greater and minor sins she may have committed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring coolness to her grave. May her grave be lightened with the visits of the purified five. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her family sabr and ajr during this difficult time. I will leave you with this last hadith by Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, where he says, Live life in such a way that when you are alive, people crave your company. And when you die, people weep over you. Wa ahayadamana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Surah al-Mubarak al-Fatiha ma'as salawat.